Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and mental health educator. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. In this uh, video, we're going to explore 10 strategies that actually work to heal from depression. Before we do that, we want to tell our regular joke. And uh, which knight invented the round table? My circumference, of course. <laughs> That's my days of a math teacher. Well, recently I came across a very inspiring book called Back from the Brink. As a matter of fact, I've named some of my videos where I interview people from, uh, who've recovered from depression. And that's what this book does. Uh, uh, Graham Cowan, the author, is a depression survivor, like me. And after he got through his ordeal, he said, well, I want to see what worked for other people. So he in interviewed a number of people, some of which were celebrities, and asked them the simple question, what actually worked for you? And then he wrote down the answers. In his interviews, he discovered or observed that there were certain strategies that were mentioned again and again and again. And not surprisingly, these are the very same strategies that I've been talking about for a quarter century on my books, websites, podcasts, YouTube channel, etc. So what I'd like to do now, and I'm really, really, I really like this list I've come up with, is to uh, share with you what I consider the 10 most effective strategies, tools, for healing from depression, anxiety, improving your mood. And these things actually work. They work because I've experienced them. My clients have, or former clients, Graham has, you know, they're, they're all over the place, but I wanted to condense them into 10 really straightforward, simple strategies that you can use uh, to improve your mood and help yourself feel better. Well, here's number one on my list, the most important one, because it's the starting point of all recovery. And that is what I call setting the intention to heal. And that is really simple. It simply means making the decision that you want to get well, even if you don't know how it's going to happen, even if you don't think it's going to happen, you still say to the universe, I want to get well. And the vehicle for doing this is to create what I call a vision statement of wellness. And in this vision statement, you ask the simple question, what would my life look and feel like if I were free from the symptoms of anxiety and depression? Like what thoughts would I be having? What would I be feeling? What would my uh, relationships be like? What would I be doing for work, etc.? And when you've asked these questions, you take the answers and write them down, maybe in a paragraph or two. And this creates what I call a mental blueprint for recovery. And if you look at that and put energy into it on a regular basis, you will attract the recovery you're seeking. Now, this is so important. I did a whole video on it called Setting the Intention to Heal. And it's the first week of my 12-week recovery program in my book, Healing from Depression. Number two on my list of 10 strategies that actually work to heal from depression should come as no surprise, exercise, something I've been preaching forever. Uh, it's nature's antidepressant, and everybody from psychiatrists to alternative healers agree that this is the case. So it turns out if you do moderately strenuous exercise where you break a sweat for at least 16 minutes, this has a tremendous effect against depression and promoting a good mood. So you can run, you can swim, you can walk, garden, pump iron, whatever it does to get your heart rate up in something you enjoy. And now in the 21st century, there are these wonderful technologies, these trackers like uh, what Fitbit, Garmin, Activity Tracker, Apple Watch that will track your activity, tell you what's going on, and give you the rewards that you're seeking from doing all that wonderful hard work. My third effective strategy that works for sure in healing from depression is uh, social support. Uh, as I said in my video on happiness, we human beings are social animals, and therefore we feel better when we're connected to other folks. And by the way, this includes pets. Oh yes, uh, I have a whole video on that, and it's amazing how many people are so bonded to their pets, even more than people, that the pets will even keep them here when they're thinking of harming themselves. So pets are really important as <laughs> sentient beings uh, for social support. And the other benefit is that of social support is if you have somebody around you who believes in your recovery, it's so easy to give up, feel hopeless, one of the cardinal symptoms of depression, and to feel like you'll never get better. But another person or group of people can do what I call hold the hope and see a vision of recovery and belief for it when you can't believe it for yourself. So if you don't have family and friends who can do that, you can find a therapist, uh, join a support group. Um, what else? Uh, you might have social connections in your spiritual community or even do volunteer work. So um, it is important to have other people around you to help you heal. The fourth effective strategy 
for healing from depression uh, that I've used other people have, especially our friends in recovery, is to live one day at a time. Now, this is especially helpful when you're looking to the future and feel overwhelmed by, you know, how am I going to get better? It feels hopeless. No, you just focus on today and you ask yourself when you get up, okay, what can I do just today, just for today, step by step, to get through the next 24 hours? And then do what needs to be done. You don't need a grand scheme of recovery. You don't need to know the details of how things will work out. You just need to figure out how to get through the day. And you know what? If you can get through one day, you can make it through your entire ordeal. If you can survive for one day, you can survive the entire process. And one day, you'll wake up, and as um, this very famous uh, seaman named Dougal Robertson said in his book on surviving a shipwreck, he said, uh, rescue will come as a welcome interruption of the survival journey, a welcome interruption. I had a time when I was absolutely in despair I went to a support group meeting and 72 hours later, I felt better. You never know what tomorrow may bring. My next strategy, number five on the hit parade, <laughs> is creating structure and routine in your life. Remember I just mentioned live one day at a time? Well, in order to do that, you have to have something to focus on during the day. Otherwise, you'll just sit and be you know, overwhelmed by your own rumination and worries. So this means setting up a series of doable strategies or doable activities that you can focus on hour by hour. Uh, this can include, you know, working at a job if you're fortunate enough to have one or doing volunteer work, uh, having a meal with a friend, spending time in nature, uh, going to the gym, you know, taking a class at something that interests you. There's about 30 or 40, and I have them listed on my website, Overcoming Suicidal Pain, because it has been proven again and again, and from my life in particular, that having structure and routine relieves depression and relieves anxiety. It gives you something to focus on the outside world, and it actually has a calming effect on the nervous system. So remember, strategy number five, create structure and routine in your life. Number six in my effective strategies for treating depression or healing from depression is finding the right uh, therapist or prescriber. Now, even though uh, friends and family can help you out in healing from depression, sometimes more is needed. Just as someone with a serious infection needs to be seen by a doctor, if you have a severe case of depression, you also need professional support. Uh, and depression is a treatable condition, just like an infection is, and when approached through finding a good therapist, psychotherapist, and sometimes medication. Now, when that doesn't work, there are other therapies, you know, kind of like bringing in the troops, right, that you can try when you have a treatment-resistant depression, such as transcranial magnetic, the magnetic stimulation, that's a mouthful, TMS or ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, ketamine, and now, in Oregon at least, they are experimenting with using psilocybin therapy for treating depression. It's now being evaluated by the FDA. So there are all sorts of things you can use. And as I jokingly tell my friends, there's never been a better time to be mentally ill than today. Number seven of effective strategies to treat depression, heal from depression, is changing your negative thinking. People who uh, have a depression uh, have a negative filter through which they experience the world. Uh, they have a negative view of themselves, a negative view of their circumstances, a negative view of the future. As comedian uh, Lily Tomlin once said, things will get worse before they get worse. Fortunately, there's a therapy that's been around for a while called cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. Many of you have heard of it. And it's pretty simple. They say, if you can change the way you think, you'll change the way you feel. So they identify 10 thinking errors or cognitive distortions. And the whole point of CBT is to identify your thinking errors, like I'll always be this way, I'll never get better, what, what a schmo am I, right? And replace them with more rational, realistic beliefs. And as you replace the negative beliefs slowly, you start to feel better. Uh, lots of books on CBT. I talk about it in my book, Healing from Depression and have done a couple of videos. Very powerful therapy, simple but powerful, to change your negative thinking. Number eight on my list of effective strategies for healing from depression is getting a good night's sleep. Easier said than done, right? According to sleep researcher Matthew Walker, who wrote a really cool book called Sleep is Your Superpower and did a TED Talk by the same name, the reason we sleep is because this is when the brain uh, clears out the toxins and renews and regenerates itself. It's so essential to feeling good, especially for people with depression because sleep disruptions are a major symptom. This means failure to get to sleep, 
but more importantly, waking up in the middle of the night and not getting back to sleep. That is, can become really hell. I did a whole video on that called, called What Happens If It's 4 a.m. and You Can't Get Back to Sleep. So how do you deal with this? Well, first you practice something called good sleep hygiene, which are good habits around sleep, like going to bed and getting up at the same time, not drinking coffee after 3 p.m., you know, uh, cutting down on screen time before bed, keeping your uh, room dark and cool. And also there are some medications that are uh, can be effective for healing from depression. I mean, and what I mean is getting a good night's sleep and they are uh, not, some of them are non-habit forming. So I did a whole video on medications to heal insomnia, but again, we need to do everything we can to make sure we get good rest because that is essential for physical health and mental health. Number nine on my list of 10 strategies to heal from depression that actually work is what I call spiritual connection. Uh, I have used many times when I've been desperate and despairing, tapping into my spirituality. And by that, I mean uh, feeling a part of an intelligence that's greater than yourself. And I believe that this intelligence is benevolent. You can call upon it in your time of need. And in some sense, it's always looking out for you. So you can tap into your spirituality through prayer, meditation, uh, finding purpose and meaning in your life, spending time in nature, becoming involved in a spiritual community. And it was this involvement almost 25 years ago, uh, on July 14th, 1997, that a spiritual community came together when I was at my wit's end, held a vision of love and healing for me, and that actually helped me get better. So I know from personal experience how spirituality can be healing, and I hope you all find your own ways to connect with it. The 10th and perhaps most important uh, strategy that works for healing from depression is what I call perseverance and persistence. Overcoming depression is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. This is partially because uh, we're in a stage in psychiatry that's still pretty primitive. We don't know what treatments will work, uh, how long they take to work. So there's a lot of trial and error and a lot of just, it takes a long time. But I found a quotation by Matt Haig from his wonderful book, Reasons to Stay Alive, that have been very helpful to me. He says, Minds have their own weather systems. You're in a hurricane. Hurricanes run out of energy eventually. Hold on. What Matt is saying is if we can just hold on and keep persevering and persisting and moving forward in spite of the difficulties we face, then one day our ordeal will end. As my friend Julie said about her suicidal depression, I just had to wait it out. This has been Douglas Box. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope uh, you have learned something from it. I hope some of these 10 strategies that you haven't tried, you'll try them. Uh, they really are quite wonderfully effective. If you did learn something, please give this uh, video a like. Uh, it draws viewers to the channel. If you have a comment, please leave your comment in the comment section, or you can email me, douglasbach at gmail.com. Speaking of comments, I really appreciate the comments uh, that you do send. Here's one I recently got on from a video uh, called Reasons to Stay Alive. And one name, Laura, says... Um, Life has tested me severely many times. I searched for help on YouTube and you were there. Profound thanks, God bless. So comments like these that let me know I'm really making a difference and kind of give me the inspiration to keep doing this. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel, uh, click on my photo during the closing credits. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. And if you click on the little uh, bell to the upper right, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or a new live chat. If you want to donate to this channel and help it keep going, you can click on the Patreon link. You'll be taken to my crowdfunding uh, site where you can become a monthly subscriber for as little as $2 a month. And uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> and thank you for watching. And until we meet again, I wish you the best for your mental health recovery. Again, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.